Welcome to the Pope Prep Basketball Coaches Show. Dr. Charles Wade in with us. Hello. The last show, we made it to the end. We always wondered if we would get to that week after Cookville. The season, you wanted it to end in Cookville. You just didn't want it to end on Thursday in Cookville. You were hoping it would be uh, cutting some nets down on Saturday. But what a heck of a run this season. Tough game against Briarcrest. Tough to get into a rhythm. Talk about that matchup for you all. Well, it was a... Uh... It was a matchup of uh, two teams that had won a lot of games coming into it. We both were sitting at four losses, so but um, they had a little bit more of experience of being in Cookville. I think this was their third straight year. They played in the championship game the year before, um, so that little that experience showed up. They they were a little bit more, I guess, poised than we were, a little bit more comfortable with the Cookville situation. Um, but they just. Uh, they got off to an early start. They hit, they hit uh, five threes, I want to say, in the first quarter and finished five for six. So they didn't even attempt anymore after the first quarter. And um, we were playing catch up from, from the word go. So we were, we were trying to chase them down. And anytime we'd get it to within five, seven, eight, or nine, um, we'd either get a foul call. Mm -hmm. A lot of those were called, or, you know, they'd hit a big shot. And we just, could never get in a rhythm because we were uh, a lot of our guys didn't play the allotted minutes that we would have normally played them just because they were in foul trouble. We had uh, Antonio Trey and Jerron as as starters that didn't get to play much in the second quarter because of foul trouble, and then they got in their early foul trouble in the third. So it was uh, it was a game that just really didn't go according to the way we had pictured it, and um, you know. At the end of the day, we would have liked to have played them, and we got their best shot, and they, mm -hmm. they get ours. How tough is it? Um, you know, when you talk about fouls, uh, and it was on both sides, there were 51 total fouls called in the game, 72 foul shots. The game felt like it took forever. How tough is that to get into a rhythm? Because you're a transition team. You can't get in your transition when you're out of the fouls and things like that. Did you make adjustments? Did you did, did it just – Talk about the effect that that had on your team, because it certainly had an effect on both teams. Yeah, it, it, it had an effect on both teams. Um, I talked to their coach later on that night, and he he agreed. He was like, Coach, y'all wasn't able to play the way you wanted to, and neither were we. Um, and we are a pressure team, and we were a more athletic team, so it would have benefited us more to get up and play more in face in your face defense uh try to get deflection steals uh get in the transition the way we like to play but it's hard to do that when every two possessions there's a whistle being blown and um especially when you get behind early it's, it's hard to catch up when you can't pressure or play catch up type ball or, or be able to pressing your man or your zone mm -hmm. presses. Uh, the one thing we probably would have did different is once uh, all the guys got that early one, we probably should have went into zone. Even though they were hitting that three-point shot, it would have kept our guys out of additional foul mm -hmm. trouble. And <clears throat> we probably could have bought a little bit more time on the floor if we would went to zone. Well, you did. You created 20 turnovers. I don't yeah, know how many 23 points. 23. 23. Yeah. Don't know how many points you got off those turnovers because I felt like you would create a turnover and go down there. And you, you were 2 of 22 from three. Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult to win any basketball yeah. game when you're 2 of 22. If you shoot your, your typical percentage – you're right there in that game. Yeah. But you all were able to create the turnovers. Yeah, two for 22 from three, 17 to th from 31 from the from the foul line. I mean, you hit eight or nine more of those free throws, mm -hmm. and you're in the game in the fourth quarter with a chance to win. We, we have not been a great three-point shooting team, but, I mean, if you hit two to three more of those and you're, you're in the ball game in the fourth. Uh, and then, like you said, we created some turnovers, but we had – some times where we gave the ball right back, yeah. where we overthrew a guy or a ball went through our fingers. Anytime we were able to create our own momentum, we we kind of shot ourselves in the foot also. You know, we, we talked a lot this year about, about what your team learned from last year, uh, and they learned a lot. What will they take away from particularly this game um, and, and learn to get back there next year uh, and treat differently maybe because it will be – something they'll be used to having been there once before already. At the end of the day, when, when the ball's 
tipped up. Everything that went around um, the game is just part of it. Mm-hmm. But when the ball gets tipped up in the air, it's time to play. And you have to leave the nerves behind and understand it's, at the end of the day, it's just a basketball game. And we were we we were really emotional in some, at some time in the game where we, we should have been a little bit more poised. Um, our youth showed a little bit. Um, but that's part of the maturation process. You would have liked to be, you know, you would like to be good enough to just kind of um, overcome it. Sure. Um, but but Briarcrest was too good for us to kind of overcome what we needed to overcome to, to try to win that basketball game. And a cool moment last Thursday morning at 9.15, you all pull out. The whole student body is out there. You're in the bus. You're getting a police escort out of here. I mean, what a, what a great send off! And then the student body—I'll just say the student body because there was no school that had more fans, more no. students there than we did. When I watched on TV the other games, I mean, we had 350, 400. I think we had over 500 out that day. Yeah, and it was impressive. Not only our students, but even even parents and some alumni and people that have kids play for us before. They all showed up and and showed out for us at the game. I can't thank the community enough. I mean, the last two months has been uh, uh, like a magic ride. Just anytime we had a game up here at Pope Prep, we had a good representation. Um, the game against Baylor was was amazing. Mm-hmm. That was one of the best atmospheres I've ever been a part of. And But then you look up in the stand in Cookville, and it's just a sea of pink. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't thank our students enough. I can't thank our administration enough for for allowing them to take the day off to come up there and and the support that we've been shown all all year. Our community really really was um, in full effect, and it was it was an amazing to see as a coach that had been here for nine years to see mm-hmm. our community respond um, behind one of our teams. And hopefully, this just doesn't happen for. Our basketball team, hopefully, it, it crosses over through every sport mm-hmm. and galvanizes our community to back our kids. Um, when they're being successful like we was, but even if they're not having such a successful season, it's important for us to get behind our kids. So this season now we can properly look back, and I'm sure it's something you'll do in the next the months to come. Yep. Most wins in school history, the first region championship in, in, in school history, and, and I want to bring up a young man because you all had a really cool exchange after after the game uh, with Fred Bailey. Yeah. Uh, and it's not a knock on, on the other seniors, but I kind of want to single Fred out for a moment yeah. because Fred came here as a freshman, yeah. and he kind of started where we are now, right, right now. And hopefully it's a start to where we're going to continue building in the future, and we'll get to that later in the show. But talk about Fred's impact on this team. I mean, Fred's impact – him coming here and deciding to play at Pope, he was really the first. I mean, we've had some great players, don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, but he was really kind of the first like decorated guy that came in here and then started a trend of other guys to follow. Um, you know, I, I look back on Fred's career. I wish we'd have played him more as a freshman. We had some good guards that year, but uh, Fred – kind of bided his time Mm -hmm. his freshman year. He didn't play as much. Um, If I could go back and change that, I would. I think he'd own the scoring record if we probably Mm -hmm. let him play a little bit more as a freshman. Um, But he did. He never complained. He just practiced. His freshman got better. Sophomore year, he took full advantage of Mm -hmm. of his opportunity. He played more of not a scoring role. He was a he was our primary ball handler along with Tristan, but he was our best defender. Um, great rebounder that year, um, and just really started that trend of guards getting other guards better in practice. So I mean, him and Tristan would go at it, and then he, he and Trey, and um, and it's just and now Osby and Jerron is going to benefit from that same type of uh, practices and getting better. And closing thoughts on just this season and what it meant to you. And I, I don't know if you've had time to really process that. I know it still stings from the loss yeah. last week, uh, and it may be something that's easier to ask in a couple of months. But just kind of some closing thoughts on this season for you. Uh, what I what I think about is, is it all started last summer. Um, 
we knew we had a special ball club based on the way we finished the summer. Um, I think about the summer before, I knew we were talented, but I knew we were going to struggle with some maturity and leadership. Um, the guys took the challenge to, to be, you know, better on and off the court. Mm -hmm. um, we were not perfect by any means, but there was a lot of growth. And um, I saw that happen in the summer. We knew we were going to be successful um, once the season started because the guy they they were when I tell you they were putting in the work they were putting in the work um, and but also the closeness of the team you didn't see one really without seeing the other yeah um, that that goes a long way um, I still think we could do better um, in being a more of a close knit family um, but also the work of the coaches Coach Abner Coach Lane Coach Webby um, they had a big, big part in our success, Coach Abner, especially with the offense and and even the relationships and dealing with the kids inside the building, having those tough conversations um, when they were needed to happen. Um, he and Ricky both, that yeah. was, that's been, that's huge for our success. So, um, you know, I, I know I'm the head coach. I get a lot of the the hoorays and yes, but I we wouldn't be where we were without those coaches. Well, it's been an incredible season, and you know it's one that we will look back on finally when the when the sting of the loss wears wears off because you all did so many great things, yeah. and it was really cool to see in this community the gift that you all gave this community yeah. uh, of what this place can be yeah. when when everybody is competing at that level. Yeah. And when we come back, we're going to look ahead and talk about the future. Uh, next year and, and how the process will go and getting ready for next season because you're already thinking about next year when we come back. Your favorite wine tasting experience is back. The Hendersonville Rotary Club's Wine and Roses Fundraising Gala. Everything you loved and more. Saturday, March the 2nd. Prepare your taste buds for elegant wines, smooth whiskeys, craft beers, and exceptional food. Browse through the silent auction. All to benefit over 25 local charities, schools, and scholarships. Wine and Roses. Saturday, March the 2nd at Our Lady of the Lake Catholic Church, Hendersonville. HendersonvilleRotary.org. We thrive under the lights. A city of performers. Putting on one heck of a show. Headlining night after night. Welcome to Smashville. Having fun? Yeah, I'm going to keep my own pretty soon. Me too. Good night, Kika. Good night. of Murfreesboro, we're here whether you're ready or not. Welcome back. The book is now closed on this past season, but let's start looking ahead because for you, there's not much downtime. You're already scheduling games. Talk about your summer program and kind of the next step for your kids as you get ready for what will be a busy summer. Yeah, the, the next step is we have uh, end of season player meetings. Um, just kind of talk to guys on some of the things they did well, some of the things they need to work on for next year, um, who talk to the guys that need to be leaders for us next year. Uh, and then we start planning summer practices and summer play dates and at colleges um, and then some of the high school team camps. Uh, and we try to get 10 of those. We get 10 of those days, so we try to use every one of them. Um, we come culminate the summer with uh, BCAT. Um, we'll play two days in Memphis. That's a live period for the high schools where the college coaches, instead of the AAU live period, they get to actually come out and watch the high schools 
play, which has been really beneficial for us the last two or three years. We got a lot of traction last year. And, and <clears> with <throat> Trey Pierce and the odds being Jerron and Camden um, on our roster, there are going to sure. be a lot of uh, college eyes on us again. So that's that's the big thing is just try to uh, do some lay some foundational things in the summer that will carry over into um, once we start practicing in November. How important is the summer basketball just for your chemistry? Because they don't have the stress of school at that point. And it's really a great chance for them to take basketball seriously, but to goof off a little bit and just get to know each other better. Well, it's, it's, it's the kind of the rendition of the new team. So you, you really find out who's going to be your score, leading scores, who's going to take the rebounding man, who's going to be the next defensive guy, who's the guy that no one has heard of that they're going to hear of next year, who's going to step up in summer and kind of carve out their 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 spots and their roles. Um, and it's like playing a season within a season. We get anywhere from 20 to 25 games with those mm -hmm. 10 days. Um, when you play game two or three, you really don't get the – the best version of yourself mm -hmm. by that time they're tied. But <clears throat> usually in that first game you can tell, like, how good you're going to be. Um, and we we will um, we will use the summer to put in things that we know that this particular team is going to be really good at. So we'll change some things defensively. Um, we'll, we'll add in a little bit more zone, so we'll have a go-to when we do get in foul trouble because we're going to continue to pressure the ball. Um, and then offensively, do do some things that make sense for this group. This is probably going to be a little bit better shooting starting five, so we'll have more, more sets and more things that we're going to – be able to knock down jump shots. We'll still be able to get to the rim with Osby, Jerron, and Trey, and Anthony Wiggins, but we'll, we'll also be a much better shooting basketball. Let's talk about those sophomores for a minute, Those particularly those three sophomores, yeah. um, because they're all three unbelievably talented individuals and have been asked to do different things. Yeah. Um, and we'll start with Jerron, because Jerron is a guy this season, you all ask him to step up and be your defensive guy. Yeah. Uh, I would assume that as you go forward, he's going to have a much bigger role offensively um, because you'll need that, certainly, yeah. with, with Fred and Antonio being gone. So talk about Jerron and his impact. Well, Jerron has really sacrificed. Um, Jerron could have averaged double figure the last two years if, if that's what we needed him to do. But we needed him to guard the best player offensively for, for um, the opposing team. But this year, he'll probably end up getting anywhere from seven to eight more shots a game, um, and he'll be a double-figure scorer for us. I would imagine anywhere from 12 to 15 a game. Uh, we've, we're going to still need him to be a mm -hmm. defensive stalwart, um, but just that that increase of more ball handling responsibilities. We'll have Trey and Osby and Anthony, but Jerron also could play point guard if, if, if need be. Mm -hmm. So he, he's, he's that skilled of a player. Um, his maturation and his energy at the at the stretch of this ball season, um, we'd like to see more of that to run to start the summer and, and the year. And the cool thing, and we'll talk about Osby next. You know, both Trey Trey has some of the best vision I've ever seen of a kid at that level, and the way he can move the ball. Osby's not far behind because no. Osby sees things. You're like, wow, I didn't I didn't even see that guy over there, and he'll make a pass, and you're. So talk about Osby and, and his impact uh, his impact going forward because he can shoot it from 35, 40 feet if he needs to, but he can also get to the basket and he can make plays and get other people the ball. Yeah, Osby is a well-rounded person, player that, that stays in the gym. He puts in more gym hours as, as anybody on the team. Um, he, he goes to a lot of camp. He, he always creating competitions for himself. He's probably one of our more competitive kids because he, he likes to go to one-on-one. -on -one. He likes to scrimmage five-on-five. Five. So he, he mm -hmm. likes to play. Um, and he just uh, he's about, he's around it all the time. I don't know if the kid ever takes more than a day or two off. He's going to be somewhere in somebody's I, I did gym. see him hitting golf balls yeah, the other day. Well, so. that's, <laughs> that's good for him. Um, but he, he doesn't take much time off, but he's – he will be someone who's scoring is obviously going to increase. Um, he'll tell you he'll need to shoot a better percentage from behind mm -hmm. the three. Um, 
he's someone that's probably more capable of shooting 40% from the three-point range, and that's right. that's he'll tell you that, and that's probably where he's going to be closer to next year. Um, he'll have more opportunities to shoot the three. Um, but the, the biggest growth from Osby, honestly, was his defensive growth because mm -hmm. of the, the strength that he gained. Uh, he stayed healthy this year, which he was unable to do last year because his body was getting used to high school basketball. But that was huge for us that he, he was healthy down the stretch with the ankle and back that used to give him a lot of issues. So I think he's only going to get stronger. He's still getting taller. He's got an offensive package that is as good as anybody in the state. And Osby's going to be an all-state type player yeah. next year. And then we'll go to Trey. Uh, Trey, in my opinion, in my opinion, is useless. I know nothing. <laughs> but Trey has a chance to walk out of this school as one of the best to ever put the, put the uniform on if he continues working and doing the things. And this is a kid that, that started playing for. He's an eighth grader. Um, and you want to talk about a kid that has really matured. Uh, and I'm talking about really in the classroom on mm -hmm. this side of it, yep. from where he was two years ago to now, and I've told him that. Yeah, uh, it's been really cool to watch him mature yeah. um, and and be the become the young man that, yep. that he is. But talk about him a little bit and and his future because it's it's as bright as anybody's. Well, I was uh, actually working on records for banquet. We, we you know we try to keep where players are for school history, whatever. He's already at 813 points as a, going into his junior year. So he'll he'll hit 1,000, maybe 1,300 by the end of next year. So he's got an outside shot to, to get to 2,000. If he uh, senior year, he'll he'll be an all-time leading scorer. Um, it's, it's that simple. It's all laid out for him. He's going to be the assist leader when he leaves here. He probably already is. I just had yeah. um, uh, added it all up. But Trey, it's going to be really important for his maturation to continue. But um, I hope they were all watching the Briarcrest championship game the other day. And Coach Arrington, when the game was over, the most important thing he said, and I hope they all listened, he's like, my group deserved to win a state championship because they were player-led all year. And we're going to have to have Trey to take that mantle. He, Osby, and Jerron, and Camden, and they'd be a player-led team. Um, not to say it didn't happen some this year, but we wasn't totally where we needed to be. Sure. I think for us to, to hold that gold ball, we're going to have to transform all the way into a player-led team. And the coaches just be there for guidance and do what we need yeah. to do. But when the, when, when the players are controlling the locker room and, and dictating things that happen, that's when you have a team that is really that's going to be – that's going to achieve even more than they thought they could achieve. And then next year you'll have a, a senior, a guy that's done so much for your program already is Camden Days. Mm -hmm. Camden's getting a lot of looks right now. Had yep. a visit recently, was, I think, uh, Samford. to, to yep. Samford yep. that went really well. Yep. And talk about what your expectations, because he's going to be your big next year as it stands right now. My expectation for Camden is to play every game like he played that last. Mm -hmm. Even though we, we lost, he had 13 rebounds. Um, and that's what we've been trying to get him to be. To, to become. If he becomes the 10 to 12 rebound a game guy, he's going to probably get eight points off putbacks. Um, and then he's skilled enough to go out and get his other seven or eight, however he needs to get them. Um, but Camden got a chance to probably be six, eight or six, nine by the time he leaves here, yeah. um, if he keeps growing. Um, Slightly taller than he, me. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so D1 coaches will be all over him. Um, if he continues to add ball handling and, and fluidity, fluidity to his game, he will be a great offensive force. Um, and defensively, he, he he blocks shots and comes from the weak side about as well as anybody I've, I've seen play. And then the athleticism with sure. the dunks and all that, he's, he's, he's up there. So we've talked about four players that I think pretty much anybody that's been around this program would pencil them in as four starters mm -hmm. next year. And in that fifth spot, you know, we'll probably know where it's headed at some point. But but you're going to have a group of guys that are, that are going to compete mm -hmm. really for that five, six, and seven spot that's yep. going to be in there. One that you already brought up earlier in the show is Anthony Wiggins, mm -hmm. who was uh, as a as a middle schooler, Sumner County Player of the Year, yep. Rucker, 
um, just competed, completed his freshman year yep. and expecting some big things out of Anthony uh, in his next three years. Yeah, Anthony's right there with those line of guards from, you know, from Tristan to Fred mm -hmm. to, to Trey, um, similar type players. Um, so he, he's got a chance to just be a continuation of those guys. He's every bit as talented as they are. Um, Hence the success we had on our freshman and JV team was a big part of um, Anthony being a part of those teams. So he, yes, he's a really talented kid, and and the most important thing, he's a great kid on uh, in, off the court. Yes sir, no sir type kid, and mm -hmm. um, really gonna play a big part in what type of culture we're trying to have going forward. And then talk about some of the other guys that will be competing uh, to, for for minutes and. Contributing to your team because you're going to need you're going to need seven or eight there to be able to kind of roll with it. Yeah, well, if you watch the state championship game, Jack Valentine acquitted himself quite well out there. Uh, he's one that has really improved defensively, but his size and his shooting, um, he he could be a a really good player for us. Um, and then you have Blaine, who has some experience. Um, he's a great shooter. Um, he shoot it from anywhere, yeah. to be honest with you. And he, he, he hit quite a few threes for us last year. He didn't get as many opportunities this year because the team looked a little bit different. But he could uh, he could be a big part of what we're doing. Um, Noah, Noah Wagner is mm -hmm. going to be a big part of what we're doing because he's our second big. And he, he's he's got the frame. He works hard. Again, another kid that's going to be a big part of who we want to be off the court and on the court, just a, uh, a great kid that that is going to be a good defender, good rebounder for us. We want to develop him a little bit more in the post where he's comfortable scoring. Well, now you get to uh, <coughs> put me. your feet up a little bit, yeah. get back to your day job here. Yeah, uh, You get to watch a little March Madness, follow some softball, get out on the golf course. It's certainly well earned, and you know, hats off to, to not only you, but it's hats off to everybody within the program that's involved in the program. I know you're quick to give credit to everyone else, but as a community, we thank you for everything that that team gave to us this year yeah. because it was a really cool moment. Uh, it was a treat for all of us. Um, you know, I'm going to give credit to, again to someone, my, my wife and kids, mm -hmm. who sacrificed so much for me to be able to do this. But if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be in this in this position or probably wouldn't even want to be in this position. I um, So I, I think... Kara, uh, me and Olivia and, and Brianna for for the sacrifices they made for our, so I could be able to. Do well, that's the that thing I about know. that coaching profession. Uh, if they want to be around you from basically November to February, they've got to come sit with a thousand people in the stands and watch you because it's tough. You know. Yeah, yeah, and they and they do a good job of sharing. I mean, after games and people want to talk, they want to talk about the game, and they kind of just bide their time, and then we'll go somewhere after the game, and we dine and we talk about it, and yeah. And on to the next one. Well, before yeah. we know it, we'll be back here doing this again next year. Yeah. Coach. It's been a pleasure. Enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you.